All right. We have a structure C9, H10, O3. First thing we need to do is figure out the degrees on saturation. So what is the DU for this molecule? Five. Five. Very good. So if it's above five, we always think ding, 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 ding benzene ring. Is it possible for something to have zero degrees? Yes, something can have zero. Right? That means there's no pi bonds or rings. So it can have zero. Right? So uh, benzene ring has four, right? Three pi bonds and one ring. So we take away four. So we still have one either one pi bond or ring left to go, right? One pi bond or ring left to go. So that's what DU told us. The IR, the IR has a peak from 2300 to 32. So that is pretty broad and big. And that would make us think either OH or NH probably, right? Well, I guess it can't be NH because do we have any nitrogens in our formula? No. So we know this is an OH. At IR, we also have a 1710 peak. So what does that tell us? C double bond O probably. What about 1600? 1600, what's that tell us? CC in the ring maybe? Or maybe a CO single bond? Is that what that's at? No, I don't think so. CO pi bond, or CC pi bond. Okay, so that's what the IR told us. Fantastic. So one of our degrees on saturation is probably going to be wrapped up into what? This CO pi bond will cover that last degree of unsaturation. Right, the CO pi bond. So we'll go with our DU now. So we can check our DU off. Got our all from DU's done. So the benzene ring has four. CO pi bond is the other one. So degrees of saturation is covered. So let's shrink this up. Put it kind of over here. In the corner. Now let's look at our NMR. In our NMR, it says there's a peak like this. It says it's an OH proton at 11.7 worth 1H. So what do you think that is? If you look at your an OH, what kind of OH? Now it should help narrow this down for us. Carboxylic acid, right? So this tells me that I for sure have a carboxylic acid, which covers the two things I saw in the IR, right? It covers the OH and the C del bondo. Yes? How can you tell us a carboxylic acid and not separate? Because 11.7 on my table, carboxylic acids are way de-shielded. Yep. And it says OH proton. And it says OH proton. Yeah, it tells you it's an OH proton. It literally says OH proton. So I know that's, that's what it's for. So now I want to take that C9H10O3. I can subtract a C and O2. Oops. C10 and O2 and an H1, right? So that gets me to C8. H9O, right? So I know I have my first piece is a carboxylic acid, is this right here. Now look at the rest of my NMR. I have two peaks in the around, let's see, it's kind of a messy looking thing. Worth two H's there. I have another messy looking kind of thing. Worth three H's. This one's at about 7.2. This one's at about 6.9. So it appears that there's only two types of peaks here. But what's, what region is that in? When we look at these and they zoom in on them, they look pretty messy. Right? There's like a lot of coupling going on maybe, but it's not really resolved. But what region is that in? 7.2 and 6.9. What would you? Benzene. And how many protons total are there in the benzene region right now? Well, no. Two plus three is five. So what kind of benzene ring do we have then? A, what a mono substitute, right? Substituted once. That's what this is telling us, right? We're not asking you to figure out what protons these are and what protons these are. All we want you to figure out is the structure. 
So this tells us we have a benzene ring, which matches up with what we thought before. And what type of benzene ring? Mono, di, tri, tetra. This one's only mono substituted because there's still five H's. So that means only one of the six H's has been replaced. So this tells us we have a benzene ring, and it's mono substituted. So there's that piece. So we can subtract minus C6H5. So I have C2, H4, and an O left. So there's our second piece. Okay. The last two peaks we have are, let's see, they are, I'm going to scrunch this down a little bit. Oh. Copy down. What is the backup like? They don't tell us the splitting on that. And because it's so um, not resolved, they can't get us the coupling constants because it's not resolved. Right? Imagine that big the 40, 45 megahertz NMR, the Pico spin NMR we did. Right? You couldn't see, right? Sometimes you thought you'd see three peaks, but you only saw one big blob. Right? So sometimes it's just not resolved. Okay, the other NMR peaks, you have two more NMR peaks, and they are triplets worth two H's. And they both have coupling constants equal to 6.3 hertz. So what does that tell you? Are they the same coupling constant? That means what? They're talking to each other, right? They're coupled to each other. Even if you didn't have a coupling constant here, you should know they're talking to each other because that's all it's left. This peak is at 4.1, and this one's at 2.8. Right, remember now, where are these going to go? So we know they're talking to each other. So if I labeled this A and this one B, I'd have a carbon with A. And B has to be right next to it, right? Because they're talking, they have to be right next to each other. So this would have to be B, B, right? And we don't know what's on either side of B or A. So let's subtract that piece out. Minus C2H4. All you have left is an oxygen. Where do you want to put the oxygen? What would you think? Probably next to B, right? Because B is Y. Why would you put it next to B? B is more D shield. So let's put that O right here. And now we have our third piece. Now you got to decide how to put it together from here. There's two ways to do it. There's two ways to do it. So see what you come up with. I screwed something up. The higher PPM is the, yep, is I screwed this up. Okay. The oxygen should be on the other side. My bad. Oops. All right, sorry. The oxygen should be on the other side. A is more deshielded. Right. A is at four point one. But there's still, we can still figure out what we need to put there too. Okay. Sorry. So you have three pieces, and a mono substituted benzene ring. So you basically, have a, the choice is. What part's going to be bonded to the oxygen? Is it going to be the benzene ring or the carboxylic acid part? The easiest thing to do is to draw both. Or So let's go back and check. Let's check this one. So five aromatic protons work for both. That's good. OH, that's right. These will both be triplets, right? The problem is, have you ever seen anything like this? And it's also going to be really, really much negative. Like this is going to be probably higher than 4.1, right? More, even more detailed because all these electrons pulling. So the best answer in this case is this one. Right. The best answer is this one. 
this looks weird. You haven't seen anything like it. Also, this H right here, which we have it labeled as HA, would might be even would probably be more D shielded than 4.1 because there's three oxygens playing on it. So I think it'd be that probably doesn't work the best. Also, this stretch wouldn't be at 1710, it'd be someplace else too. For this one we have C9 H thirteen NO. What's our DU for this gonna be? What? Four. Four. So of course that means to us benzene ring probably. Ding ding ding, benzene ring. Our IR, what is our IR showing us? Has a peak at thirty three sixty. Right, if it doesn't say broad, right, and 3280, they show two like this. If you look at the helpful hints, right, this two like this means probably an NH2 because there's, there's two H's. It's like that NH2 doublet. So these two peaks together tell me that you have an NH2. That's what that tells me. They call it a doublet. They actually say doublet. Because there's two polar bonds to hydrogen. So they call it a doublet. Another one is 1611. And they say that is not a carbonyl stretch. They say no carbonyl. So what must that 1611 represent, you think? What could it represent? It's a possibility. Maybe the ring. Maybe some CC pi bonds, right? Probably. Okay. Good. So let's shrink this down. We've got our DUs covered. We can even at this point take our, our formula, C9H13NO, and subtract out NH2, right? Because we know that's going to be one of our pieces. So you have c 9 H eleven O. So we already have one of our pieces is an NH two. In our NMR spectrum, what do we have? We have two doublets, seven point one, six point nine. Each of them are worth, you know, it says here, the combined total is 4 H's. And their coupling is 8.7 and 8.7. So when they say that, right, those are obviously two different protons. Right? They can't, if you're the same proton, you can't have two, you can't have the same coupling constant twice. Right, so, but it, either way, how many, so you have a benzene ring, right? How many H's are on your benzene ring? Four. So what kind of benzene ring, how many substitution, how many substituents are on your benzene ring? Di two. So it's di substituted. And now we gotta decide where would we put those two those substituents to get such that we get four H's and they two and only two types. So if I put one substituent is gonna be there, where else do I need to put a substituent? Complete, exactly opposite, right? This will give me two types of H's that will be coupled to each other, right? So that's another piece. So now we subtract out minus C6H4. So C3H7, oh, right? That's good. Shrink it all down, that's fine. How about now, we have another peak. We have a big singlet worth three H's, and that's at, ooh, 3.8. So what do, we, what do we think that's gonna be? 3.8, three H's. What do we think? What by the oxygen? What? What by the oxygen? A methyl group, right? So put an O, put a CH3. There's one another there's another piece. 
we could label this one A. So there's A's. So let's subtract out that. Minus C H three oh. So we have C two H four left over, right? So again, the other two peaks we have, we have two triplets, each worth two H's. And they both have coupling constants of 6.9. So that means they're coupled to each other. And they're at, oh, 2.9 and 2.7 ppm. So they're next to each other. They're both with two H's. So let's say we have a CH. Let's call this one. This one can be B. This one can be C. So there's B. And B has to be what? Right next to C, right? Because they're coupled to each other. Both has triplets with two nearest neighbors. Do we know what's over here yet? No. No. Okay. So that's our final piece, right? That covers everything, I think. All right, so we have a disubstituted benzene ring, an NH2, an OCH3, and then these two CH2s. So now you guys are putting things together and maybe thinking about, right, where would they like to be? What makes, what makes the most sense as far as the frequencies, the PPM are concerned. Where would we like to put things? What makes sense? So the OCH3 has to be by itself. So this is all by itself. What about B and C? What are their, what are their PPMs? 2.9, 2.7, where's that gonna be, you think, near? So, yeah, what do you think, where do you think B is gonna be near at 2.9? Nitrogen, I think, right? Right. If you look in that region, right, and right, one of the things to think about, right, what's more, who's more electronegative, oxygen or nitrogen? Right. Oxygen usually gets you around about three or three five. Nitrogen keeps you around two, two five, or two five, two seven. Right. So I would put this. I would say benzene ring. And the opposite side would be the O CH3. Right now, I always go back and check. Always go back and check. The benzene ring substituted, right? Di substituted. We have two types of protons. We have an O CH3 by itself. This would be at 2.7, which still falls in, right? It's a little high for the allylic region, but it's not unreasonable, right? 2.7. This is at 2.9 next to the nitrogen. Notice, why don't you, you don't couple with the H's on the nitrogen, do you? Right? So if you're on an NH or OH, you do not couple, even if you are three bonds away. They don't couple. Okay? So there are H's here that are three bonds away from this, but they don't talk to each other. There's too much disturbance between the, in going, trying to go through the nitrogen. So nitrogen, oxygen, OH's, NH or OH, they do not couple. This is a good one um, to re not forget, right? Sometimes you get too far ahead of ourselves. Let's go back and see if we can do this. Uh, it helps us, this one problem is going to help us understand kind of the additive effects of having uh, multiple things deshielding you, right? It is additive, right? So if you're a carbon, if you're a hydrogen that's near two oxygens, you get double the effect. Right? Not exactly double, but it's more than just one, right? So this will help highlight that. So we have a molecule. Oh. Do, 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 do. Oh, oh, nice. It's, it's, it's um, erythritol. Well, with methyls on it. It's naturally derived from sugar. Okay. So it's asking is how many, so first thing to think about, how many different types, did I draw this right? That's the first thing we should really be thinking about. No, I didn't. Yes, I did. You did. I did. Ooh, it's tricky. There is not symmetry. How many different types of hydrogens are in this molecule? Oof. Are there only like 
let's draw the I'll draw the H's in. You guys can talk amongst yourselves for a second. It's not an optical illusion. It almost fooled myself here. Bless. So these there's an elbow missing, but on purpose. So these would all be A. These would all be B. And now this guy over here would be C. So we have three types. So there is an elbow missing. That's the, the key features to check out here. Now the question asks, let's think about how would they be split? So for A, how is A going to, how many H's is A worth? Nine total. And the splitting it would have? Singlet, good. We'll worry about the frequencies in a second. We'll come back to that. B, how many H's is B worth? Six H's. What's the splitting going to be? Also a singlet. And now C, how many H's? Three. Three. How much was the splitting? So you could have been given this as a, right, a relative integral of 3 to 2 to 1. Right? I mean, so if you're given the molecular formula, you should realize right, the H's have to add up to whatever H's you have in your formula. Right? So let's talk about the frequencies now. Which one of these do you think is going to be the most de-shielded? Ooh, tough one. So the key thing to remember here is, right, is this three-dimensional idea? B, right, because this is a tetrahedral carbon, sp3 hybridized, right, at least these A's can kind of poke away and get out of there. B is kind of stuck, right, B is stuck there. So I would guess B would be the most de-shielded. And I'm going to predict it's going to be pretty far de-shielded, right. Now, there's actually programs that can do this for you, right. I mean, I would say approximately four, right. All of these would be around between four and three, right? If you're next to an oxygen, right, that range is between four and three usually, right? Three ppm to four ppm. So I think this would be the greatest, B would be the greatest. Which one's gonna be the next? Well, that's a little trickier. Eh. Eh. I don't think it matters. And they and they ask you the answer, you'll take both. So at this point, right, A and I would say A and C are pretty much the same, right? So really they're approximately the answer essentially does say, you know, three point five, approximately three point five. The key here was to recognize, right, number of H's, all that kind of stuff, but that B was more D shielded, right, because of the three dimensional structure. That's a nice question. Because of the three dimensional structure how that works. Let's try a um, let's try a heterolytic cleavage or no, let's try a homolytic cleavage. Let's say we have this ketone here. So we're going to submit this to the electron beam so what happens? We eject an electron, right? When an electron gets knocked out, the tooth gets knocked out. We make the molecular ion. Right, so now instead of doing an alpha cleavage, which we've done plenty of times, I'm going to do an alpha, beta, gamma cleavage instead. It's called the McClafferty rearrangement, a specific name of one. But we're going to do a gamma cleavage. Same type of mechanism, essentially. A little more, a little more intense here. So what's going to happen, make sure I do this right. So to do a gamma cleavage, you need a gamma carbon. Screw that up. Let's just X. Don't worry about this end over here. 
and don't mind me, I'm just going to add a carbon. All right, to do a gamma cleavage, I should need a gamma, car gamma carbon, which makes sense. Alpha, beta, there's a gamma carbon. Right before, I just had a gamma H. That's not good enough. I need a gamma carbon. And the bond I break is going to be an H on the gamma carbon. So draw in some lone pairs here. Let's see what's going to happen. We are going to break a couple bonds. We have a gamma cleavage and actually have an alpha cleavage as well. We're going to break that bond too. So here we go. So in this crazy maze of arrows, if you can see, so that stays the same. We broke the pi bond. There's a new H bond, an OH bond. That's what happened here. Electron, electron between the gamma and beta carbon. There's now a pi bond. The alpha and the beta carbon broke, and a new pi bond formed between the carbon there and the alpha carbon. That's what these two electrons are showing. So that's become more of a fancy alpha cleavage, or gamma cleavage in this case, type problem. Not done, because you still have to have, right, one electron from here went up, so I still should have, right, a dot and a plus charge as well. And a lone pair is still there as well. But I can't lose my radical and my cat. I balance my charges. So plus charge never left. One electron went up, so that's still my radical part. And there's that new OH bond. And then for reference, I think we did one just like this in our workshop one from chapter 14. We did do one like this. All right, so we have another one. In this one, they say we have a UV spectrum at 272 nanometers. So what does that tell us about this molecule? It has conjugated pi bonds. Right? So that's what that tells us. Cool. Its EI mass spec is 129. That's the molecular ion. So mass spec is telling us 129. So what do you know about, that's an odd mass. So what do you guys know about odd mass? That should tell us about the nitrogen rule. So that means we have an odd number of nitrogens. Right? So odd number of N. Thank you. You're welcome. Odd number N. I don't know why I put of there. Right? Odd number of nitrogens. We don't know if that's 1, 3, 5, 13. IR says... IR has one peak for us, two peaks for us. Two, two, O, O, which could be what? What could that be? Alkyne. It could be an alkyne. Or what else? Maybe a nitro. Or a nitro. We don't know. We don't know. And then we have another peak at 970. What does 970 tell us? Uh, trans. trans what? Transalkene, just right, just transalkene, that's all I was looking for. All right, so it tells us that. So no, we know for sure we have a transalkene. I mean, at this point, right, the IR, I mean, we could probably, this is a, an assumption, but we have, an, we have to have a nitrogen in this molecule. We're seeing a peak at 2200. You guys want to take the jump and just say it's a nitro? Just go from there. So let's, let's take these two pieces and subtract that from 101. So carbon weighs 12, nitrogen weighs 14. That equals 26. You're not going to be allowed to have calculators on this test. If you can't do this, there's a lot more problems. 
So 75. We have two carbons and two H's. That's 24 for the two carbons. Plus two is 26 again. Where'd you get the 101? Oh, that's a good question because that is not the right number. So if you're going to subtract something, make sure you subtract it correctly, but also make sure, you're sure you subtract it from the right number. Big mouth open, big mouth shut. 129 minus 26. That is what? 103. And that represents the nitrile. Two carbons is 12, plus 12 is 24, plus two H's is 26. So minus 26 again. 8, 1, 7, 67. So we have 67 left. Everybody with me with that? Is that right? My math making sense? No. No? Golly. I don't need a calculator. Thank you very much. It's very... 26, <laughs> ironic, 7, 7, 77, there it is, oh sweet irony, so 77 left, right, now let's look at our NMR, what does our NMR tell us, it says a peak at 7.4, that is worth 5 H's, and they're calling this an apparent singlet, basically meaning it looks like a singlet, but should it be a singlet, no, and plus it's at 7.4. What do you guys think 7.4? What, what region is that for? Benzene ring. And how many substituents are on this benzene ring? If it has five H's, it would be mono substituted, right? So this tells me I have a piece that is mono substituted. Right? So now I can subtract C6H5. How much is that way? Oh, God. It's an easy one. No, not 80 something. Even easier. What do we have left? 77? This is my 77. Right? C6H5 is 77. So we're done. Right? We literally don't even look at the rest. The NMR has other peaks. Right? The NMR has other peaks. So let's double check what those peaks are. There's a peak at all the way at 7.35. Wow, that's de shielded. But it's only worth one H, and it's a doublet, and it says its coupling constant is 17. There's another peak at 5.85 worth one H, that's a doublet, and its coupling constant is 17. You see a coupling constant like 17, what does that make you think of? Trans. Trans bond, which of course matches up with what we saw in the IR too, right? And these are obviously coupled to each other. This is really far downfield, right? But maybe this H is probably near what else, do you think? The, the nitrile part, right? Maybe it's near the nitrile. This also confirms, right, that this is the nitrox. I don't know where else I put the nitrogen. Remember, we, were, we weren't sure if we had an alkyne or a nitrile at first. Well, I don't I mean, everything's added up. So we have three pieces. This is a nice thing. This one piece right here, doesn't matter which side you put these things on? Nope. So what's the answer going to be? The biggest thing people will mess up here, you get all the way to the end and they'll forget to make the alkene trans. All right, make sure the H's are on opposite sides. So there's your answer. And I would presume that this H right here is probably the one at 7.35 because it's near the nitrile, which is also pulling away. Is it everything conjugated? So it matches up with the UV vis as well. Does, does this add up to 129? Hope so. We did the math here. I had to do it a couple times to make sure, but I think it still adds up to 129. When you move up the last part, everything's conjugated, therefore it does show up in UV vis? Yeah, so that's just, it just confirms what we already knew, right? So our, we had, this thing is UV active, which means it has conjugated pi bonds. Does it have conjugated pi bonds? Yes. It does, so that makes sense. It should. Is that like a minimum number you need here? No, it's, just double, it's like a double check. All right, doing another one. This one it says has a mass spec, two molecular ions of equal intensity at 180 and 182. When they say equal intensity, that's like an M plus and an M plus two peak of equal heights. That should tell you it's an isotope, but which isotope? Equal heights. Equal heights means bromine. 
If it was a if it was three to one, that would tell you chlorine. Okay. So it tells you equal height. So that tells me I have a bromine somewhere, for sure. Okay, so I have a bromine. The IR has a peak at seventeen forty. So what does that tell you? Even basic. This is CO, right? CO pi bond. Right? So it tells you you have that for sure. Make sense? So let's subtract out from 180, 79. So what's that? 101. Right? So just a bromine, one of the isotopes of bromine, right? 79 or 81. So you have the periodic table with you, so you'll be able to look that up. So 79 or 81. Also take out 12 and 16. So what is that? Uh, 28. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. 73 left over. Right, so far so good. 73 left over. Now let's look at the NMR. We have a peak at... 4.37, that is worth 1H, it's a quartet, and it has a coupling constant of 7 hertz. So if I see something that has like a coupling constant, usually I like to find them together. This one has 4.32, 1H, oh, no, 2, 3, sorry. Two, three, and it's worth two H's actually. And it's saying it's a quartet. And J equals seven hertz. Oh, they must be coupled together, right? Well, wait a second. They all have seven hertz. 1.80 is worth three H's. So double it. Its coupling constant is equal to seven hertz. Yikes. 1.30. 3H's, a triplet, J equals 7 hertz. So obviously, can all these things be coupled to each other? No, so they probably paired up. They're paired up some way, shape, or form. So let's label <coughs> A, B, C, and D. So another way you can pair these up is by looking at their splitting. Right? So they're all the same coupling constant, but which ones could be partners in splitting? Which ones could be partners in splitting? If I'm a triplet, how many nearest neighbors do I have? Triplet has how many nearest neighbors? So if I'm a CH3, from and this is the D, if I'm going to be split into a triplet, I have to have two nearest neighbors. Which one of the possibilities is worth two H's? B, right? So that means D must be coupled to B. That's, and then we check with B, right? What was B supposed to be? B is supposed to be a quartet, right? So B has to be near how many nearest neighbors? Three, which now, is it? Yes. So we can check off D and B. I don't know, B, presumably B has something electronegative next to it, right? It's pretty D shielded, right? 4.23. So we could say, right, what's our favorite electronegative thing we could put next to it? Maybe what? Look at the range. What could it be? For something that's next, right? So B is at 4.23. What can we put next to B to get it de-shielded? Let's, let's put it next to an oxygen. Because I think the bromine, right? If I put a bromine there, can bromine bond to anything else? Right, so there's a problem. If I suck, if I suck a bromine here, then I'm then it's done, right? I'm not done, right? So I have to have something that I can have more bonds to, right? So let's subtract this from our formula, right? So now we have what? Oh, in our little formula, 73 minus 16, six, one, seven, five. 57, 57 minus 24, and 4, 
one up. Oh, nope, didn't need to do that. Fifty-seven minus twenty-four. It's three and three, and then five hydrogens. All right, that gets us to twenty-eight. Are we there? Good. All right, so we have twenty-eight left, and we have A and C. So obviously these have to be coupled to each other. So if A or C here, so excuse me, is a CH three. So C, it needs to be coupled to A, and A is worth only one proton, and we don't know what's on the other two sides. But now A is, let's see, 4.37, right? And we still haven't, right, what pieces do we have left? We have one, two, and our bromine, right? And, oh, and our carbonyl. And our carbonyl we got to put somewhere, our CO. So let's see if we can figure out how to put these all together now. So we have one, two, three, four pieces. Let's see how we can put it together and double check our answers. So what I would start doing was I would draw the CO. And if you want to, I'd go back and really look at that 1740. We have an ester. We have an ester, right? So if you looked at 1740 really carefully on your IR, one of your IR sheets, that should tell you it's an ester. Also. I mean, there's only so many combinations that can work here, right? I know I can't put the bromine here. I could put this here and make an ether, but then I'd have to have this and the bromine there. It just, there's no, it's not going to work. You can start drawing those things out, and you should, to prove yourself that they don't work. But I'm going to put this here first. And that represents HB and then HD. Good. So the other side is going to have to be, oops, one too many, A, and that means we need to put the bromine right here. So this would be H, A, and then all these guys over here would be H, C. Now we always go back and double check. Does this make sense? Right? B still has three nearest neighbors, makes it a quartet worth two H's, yes. D has two nearest neighbors worth three H's, so that would be a triplet, yes. A is near this electronegative, right, in the, this one's near the electronegative oxygen, right, esters really pull it down to like 4.2. HA is near both that allylic spot and next to the halogen, so that's a double whammy, so that's 4.37. H, and it should be a quartet, and it is. HC should be a doublet next to 1H, and it is. There you go. And this was worth 28, so that canceled out. We got to we got to 180 eventually. So this was that last bit 28. Good to go.